Chapter Twenty Seven of The Life of Benjamin Franklin. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Greg Giordano. The Life of Benjamin Franklin by Samuel G. Goodrich. Chapter Twenty Seven conversation of a company of ephemerae with the soliloquy of one advanced in age to madame brilliant you may remember my dear friend that when we lately spent that happy day in the delightful garden and sweet society of the moulin jolly i stopped a little in one of our walks and stayed some time behind the company we had been shown numberless skeletons of a kind of little fly called an ephemera whose successive generations we were told were bred and expired within a day i happened to see a living company of them on the leaf who appeared to be engaged in conversation you know i understand all the inferior animal tongues my too great application to the study of them is the best excuse i can give for the little progress i have made in your charming language i listened through curiosity to the discourse of these little creatures but as they in their national vivacity spoke three or four together i could make but little of their conversation i found however by some broken expressions that i heard now and then they were disputing warmly on the merit of two foreign musicians one a cousin the other a muchato in which dispute they had spent their time seeming as regardless of the shortness of their life as if they had been sure of living a month happy people thought i you live certainly under a wise just and mild government since you have no public grievances to complain of nor any other subject of contention but the perfections or imperfections of foreign music i turned my head from them to an old grey-headed one who was single on another leaf and talking to himself being amused with his soliloquy i put it down in writing in hopes it will likewise amuse her to whom i am so much indebted for the most pleasing of all amusements her delicious company and heavenly harmony it was says he the opinion of learned philosophers of our race who lived and flourished long before my time that this vast world the moulin joli could not itself subsist more than eighteen hours and i think there was some foundation for that opinion since by the apparent motion of the great luminary that gives life to all nature and which in my time has evidently declined considerably towards the ocean at the end of the earth it must then finish its course be extinguished in the waters that surround us and leave the world in cold and darkness necessarily producing universal death and destruction i have lived seven of those hours a great age being no less than four hundred and twenty minutes of time how very few of us continue so long i have seen generations born flourish and expire my present friends are children and grandchildren of the friends of my youth who are now alas no more and i must soon follow them for by the common course of nature though still in health i cannot expect to live above seven or eight minutes longer what now avails all my toil and labor in amassing the honey-dew on this leaf which i cannot live to enjoy what my political struggles i have been engaged in for the good of my compatriot inhabitants of this bush or my philosophical studies for the benefit of our race in general for in politics what can laws do without morals our present race of ephemerae will in a course of minutes become corrupt like those of other and older bushes and consequently as wretched and in philosophy how small our progress alas art is long and life is short my friends will comfort me with the idea of a name they say i shall leave behind me and they tell me i have lived long enough to nature and to glory but what will fame be to an ephemera who no longer exists and what will become of all history in the eighteenth hour when the world itself even the whole moulin joli shall come to its end and be buried in a universal ruin to me after all my eager pursuits no solid pleasures now remain but the reflection of a long life spent in meaning well the sensible conversation of a few good lady ephemerae and now and then a kind smile and a tune from the ever amiable brilliant b franklin end of chapter 27
Recording by Greg Giordano, Newport Ritchie, Florida. End of The Life of Benjamin Franklin by Samuel G. Goodrich.